Oklahoma Gardening is a production of the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the land-grant mission of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University, dedicated to improving the quality of life of the citizens of Oklahoma through research-based information. Underwriting assistance for our program is provided by the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry, helping to keep Oklahoma green and growing. Today on Oklahoma Gardening, host Casey Hinches has another Oklahoma proven plant that is loaded with yellow rose-like blooms. We build a garden bench out of concrete blocks that doubles as a planter. Casey plants warm season vegetables in our All-American Selections garden, and we have some springtime lawn information with OSU turfgrass specialist Dennis Martin. your garden this spring and lacking a little color, one shrub you might want to add to your garden is Caria japonica or Japanese Caria, also called Japanese rose because you can see the beautiful flowers that it has in the springtime. Now this is a cultivar called Planiflora which has a double flower and this is the typical one that you see on the market um, but the traditional regular genus species is a single flower. Now it is a yellow flower, there is also a white cultivar available, um, but you can see this shrub really likes a, a space that it can sprawl. Next to some trees so it gets some shade but prefers a little bit of a sun as well. One thing that really is nice about this shrub are these graceful green arching branches that will persist throughout the winter time. Again, you want to give it a place that it can sprawl because it also tends to sucker a little bit, which can be a problem depending on where you've planted it. While it can get to be an impressive size, as you can see it's over my head at about six feet, you can rejuvenate it by cutting it back to the ground every couple of years to help maintain that size a little bit. This is a great shrub to add to your garden for a little extra spring color. I'm due with my second child at the end of July this season, I know I'm going to need to rest a little bit more in the garden this season. Regardless of your situation, it's important to take that time to enjoy the work that you've put into your garden. Also, it's important to create places for people to enjoy your garden as well. Today we're going to share with you a quick and easy idea to add a garden bench that also incorporates another opportunity to plant a few more plants. In order to build this bench, we're going to, of course, need something to sit on. So we're going to start with some two by six by eight foot long boards. And then we're going to use about 22 concrete blocks. Now, of course, you could use more or less depending on the pattern that you want to use. But for the pattern we're doing today, you're going to need 22 concrete blocks. In order to make sure that one side of the bench is square with the other side of the bench so that your boards line up, we're going to need a, a square some wood stakes, a mallet, and then also some string. Now once we have our concrete blocks in place, we're going to fill those with plants. And in order to hold those plants in place, we're going to use some expanded metal uh, that is often used for stucco, so you can find this at your hardware store, some landscape fabric, and then also some metal flashing. And we're going to use all of that and we're going to need some, uh, some adhesive concrete adhesive in order to keep that in place. Of course we need our tape measure and then last but not least a good pair of gloves to move those concrete blocks. You can see here we've got our first four blocks laid out already and these are kind of the most important ones to kind of establish in your placement. So what we've done is we've squared up with these stakes to make sure that um, each side of the bench will be perfectly parallel and also that we're 50 inches apart. At that point what we've done is we laid one of our boards across here and, and used a level to make sure that both sides are also level with one another and that our bricks are level. 
So we've got a few more bricks that we're going to lay on this first level, but we've got our first four established. So we're finishing off our second layer here, and you can see we've added a five more blocks on top of our first layer. Now, what we tried to do was to uh, overlap as many of those bricks as possible just to get a, bit, a little more security. We do have two here that you can see overlap nothing, and so they're actually kind of floating in space, and these can be a little precarious as far as getting them to stay there. You might have to push them just a little bit in, but eventually this next layer is going to help lock these two in. In the meantime, we're going to level and make sure that this second layer is level. If our first layer was level, the second layer should be level, which it seems to be. We'll check it in a couple of different ways just to make sure. So that looks good. And now with this second layer, we've actually reached a height of about 15 inches, which is close to our bench height that we're aiming for. So we're ready to add our two by six boards. So at this point, we've got our boards on here and we're going to help balance those overlapping blocks by placing this block right on top of these boards. So this kind of really locks everything into place again. In the meantime, we've got a nice bench to work on here. Now we did buy treated lumber because obviously this is a bench that's going to be out exposed to the elements. But because we're going to plant all of these holes here, including these two on top, there's going to be a lot of moisture sitting right on this particular area. We want to make sure to put some metal flashing just to give a little more protection and to protect it from that uh, moisture that will be sitting in there. We want to outline our brick with landscape adhesive in order to get our metal sheeting to stick to the concrete block. We've already cut our metal sheeting to match the width and length of our block here. So it's just a matter of pressing this down on there, smoothing it out a little bit. And in fact, at this point, we're going to go ahead and flip this over because the weight of our block will help keep that metal flashing in place. And then we're just going to repeat the process for the other side. Now in order to plant all of our concrete blocks, we need something to hold the soil in those blocks. And of course the ones that are over the open air, we definitely need something to hold that soil. So we're going to create these baskets out of expanded metal, again that's often used for stucco and stuff. Um, you definitely want to make sure you're wearing gloves when you're working with this because it can snag your skin pretty easily. So we've created about a 19 inch across plus sign. And it's a little bit of trial and error, but this seems to be about the measurement we work. The other thing you want to cut out a little bit on the corners here, because when you push that down in, uh, it tends to bunch up a little bit there and make it hard to push into those blocks. So we're just going to fold each of these sides up and then that creates our basket basically like that. And you can see we've got one, another one here. So we're going to have to create about 16 of these in order to fill all of our holes. So we're going to push this down into our block, kind of make a fist. Again, being careful, might even break out your rose pruning gloves to protect your arms even more. Push that down in there until it's smooth with the top of the brick so that you don't snag your skin when you're planting. And just to secure this a little bit more, we're going to use some of that concrete landscape adhesive to hold it in there. You might use some piece of wood to kind of push it into that glue a little bit better. Now of course this needs to dry, but once it dries, the mesh is actually going to hold the weight of our plant and our soil. But what's going to actually hold our soil in that mesh basket is our landscape fabric. So we'll line this mesh basket with landscape fabric again after that adhesive dries. If you 
you've been following along with us this season, you're probably aware that we started several transplants in the greenhouse earlier in the season. And now that we're approaching mid-April and the soil temperatures are around 65 to 70 degrees consistently, these transplants are ready to get out into the garden so they can t continue to thrive. We've got tomatoes and peppers, which really, for Oklahoma, we need to put them out into the garden as transplants. Now, there are a few other warm season crops that can be directly sown, but let's go ahead and start with our tomatoes first. So we've got a Midnight Snack which is an All-America Selection Hybrid. And this is an indeterminate indigo uh, cherry tomato. So because it's indeterminate means we're gonna need to stake it a little bit because it'll continue to grow. You can see that indigo color is actually coming out on the stems, but it'll be really present on the cherry uh, tomato that we harvest from it later on in the season. You can see the nice roots that we have already got established here. Again, when you're planting tomatoes, Feel free to plant them a little deeper if you're worried about the wind snapping them off because they might be a little leggy. So with this indigo tomato, the purple color is actually the same uh, pigment that is what gives blueberries the purple color as well. And so in fact, when you're eating this, you're also gonna get some antioxidants. This pepper hybrid is called Mad Hatter. And with that name, it might make you a little suspicious just to go munching on it because might sound like it might be a little hot, but actually it is a sweet pepper. It gets its name because it has a really unique fruit shape to it. Um, it almost looks like a squished pepper or more like a top. It's kind of a three-sided pepper. So we're going to plant these. They're a little bit shorter, so we're going to plant these down below here. And they won't need any staking or anything like that, so they'll be a good companion right below our indeterminate uh, midnight snack tomatoes. So fortunately for us, peppers are pretty easy to grow and they really thrive and take off and start producing in our summer heat, but it can be tricky deciding which peppers to grow. So we're not just planting one pepper, obviously. In fact, we're going to be planting even more than these two. This one is called um, Pretty and Sweet, um, and it's aptly named because it's a compact 18-inch multicolored fruited uh, pepper plant. So it has a very ornamental look to it, but it's also very tasty. So we're going to put this smaller pepper plant down here in our little drawers. Um, of course, we'll need to give them extra irrigation because there's not quite as much rooting space down here. Um, but it should be a nice little pepper. Um, again, compact, so only getting to be about 18 inches tall. Now that we've got our tomatoes and our pepper transplants planted, we're going to start putting some of our seeds that we're going to directly sow into our garden. Again, these are warm season uh, crops that we can directly sow at cucumbers, okra, corn, and squash. Now, you might see squash and cucumber transplants available, or you might have started them on your own, that's fine. Um, but they do just as fine starting them from seeds, and it's also a cheaper option a lot of times. So this first uh, crop that we're gonna plant is a cucumber called Parisian gherkin. And as the name implies, it is a mini or a gherkin pickling cucumber. It's gonna have some black spines to it. This All-America Selection Hybrid um, is a bush, but semi-vining uh, cucumber. So we, again, we're gonna put it on the back side of our trellis here. In case it does want to vine, we can attach it to the trellis. Now, a lot of times when you plant cucumbers, um, they'll say to mound it or something like that. We're kind of working in a raised bed area here, so we're not too worried about drainage. Um, we are putting this on the south side of an area um, so it'll get plenty of sunlight because cucumbers thrive in the sun, but they're pretty uh, hefty drinkers, so they're going to they're gonna want a lot of water. We're going to plant just two seeds in each of our hole, and we're going to plant those about 20 inches apart. Now it's time to plant squash, and we've got two different types of hybrids that we're going to plant. One's a butternut, which is called butterscotch squash, and the other one is a bassanova, um, and bassanova is a zucchini type squash. So it's going to actually have a little bit lighter green skin than what you might see on some zucchinis, which actually makes it easier to find when it's time to harvest amongst all that green foliage. Now this is a bushing type squash, so we want to make sure to give it plenty of room so that it can bush out and also so that maybe we can spot those squash bugs a little bit easier because we know they probably will find our plants. 
but hopefully we get a few fruit before that. So here we're going to plant these again, just using our dibble, we're going to make a hole. And these are pretty small seeds, so we don't have to go too deep. Um, and they're pretty sizable seeds. So we're going to go ahead and put two seeds in each hole to reassure that we'll get some germination there. And we're going to plant them about four feet apart. And when we start to see those come up, we'll come back and, and trim one of those seeds out. The other squash that we're going to plant is called the butterscotch squash. And like I said, it is a butternut squash. So it's going to be a vining squash. However, it is more of a compact vining squash, but we're going to give it about five feet spacing between plants. Now with this compact vine, you're actually going to get a compact fruit also. Um, in fact, it'll be about appropriate for one to two servings of butternut squash. The next crop that we're going to plant is corn, and this corn is called American Dream. Um, it is a bicolored kerneled corn, and so we're actually going to get yellow and white kernels in the same cob. And it's a great uh, corn to use in practically any way you want to serve it. You can grill it, you can uh, steam it, or you can can it also. Now you'll see this uh, seed is treated, so we want to make sure that we've got our gloves back on. Um, and we're going to plant these on about a 12 inch spacing. Now when you're planting corn, you want to make sure to plant it in a block or in rows um, and not just put a couple of random plants throughout your vegetable garden because corn is actually wind pollinated for the most part and so you want to make sure that that wind is able to take the pollen from the tassels that are at the top of the plant down to the silks that are on the female part of the plant down below where you see the ears being formed. So by planting it in a block, that's going to improve your pollination and increase your production. So we've got three rows that are about 12 inches apart and we're planting them again 12 inches between each seed down the row. Now we, you notice that with all the other warm season crops that we've planted, we've directly sown our seeds straight out of our package into the ground. With okra, you want to do something a little bit different. You want to pre-treat it by actually soaking those seeds for at least 12 hours prior to planting, but no more than 24 hours. You can see here the seeds are um, soaking, and as they do that, I'm going to pour the water out a little bit so we can catch some of these seeds to plant them. And you can see how they've kind of puffed up just a little bit. Um, it almost looks like they're already starting to sprout even, but that water has allowed to penetrate underneath that seed coat, and that will enhance germination um, when we're planting these directly into the ground. Now, if we looked at just our regular seeds as they come out of the package, they're just going to look like hard BBs, basically. So these seeds, um, while you could plant them directly into the garden, you're going to have a much better germination rate if you pre-soak them for at least 12 hours prior to planting. Of course, we've got to plant okra in our southern garden, and this hybrid that we're planting is called Candle Fire, and it is a red okra. Um, and it's actually, the pot is going to be a little more rounded and less ribbed than what you might typically find. Now, the plant itself gets to be about four feet tall, so we're going to put it on about a two foot spacing. This particular hybrid has tested and was judged well for performance, taste, tenderness, and texture. So we're anxious to see how it does here in our Stillwater Garden. Now that we got our warm season garden planted, all we've got to do is water and wait a little while. And as these plants continue to grow, we'll of course side dress them with a little fertilizer to continue to give them some nourishment as they grow even larger. And soon we'll be having a bountiful harvest. We've got our metal baskets glued into each one of our concrete um, uh, blocks, although we didn't put metal baskets in here because it didn't really need to be reinforced because we've got the boards underneath this. Um, we then lined each of the baskets, and including these up here, with some landscape fabric. Because while the baskets will hold the weight of the plant and the soil, it's actually going to be the fabric that holds the soil in the block. So we've chosen this time to use a thinner landscape fabric intentionally. We've got, you know, there's a thick one that we often use, but we chose the thin one because it actually folds up a little bit better and is easier to work in that smaller space. 
So we've got that in there and you can still see it's showing. Um, we know it's showing, but what we're gonna do is finish planting all of our plants before we go back and cut any overlap of that liner that's still hanging out. Now, some of the plants that we've selected for our uh, bench here, um, we intentionally looked for plants that were drought tolerant that might add a little color, such as our lantana, some trailing plants such as the licorice plant and the secrezia, We've also got some ice plant here that should do really well in the drought conditions. Um, and then because people are sitting here, we want to make sure that they experience the garden, not just with their eyes, but they actually can smell it too. So we've got some thyme and some lavender, some rosemary and sage that we've incorporated as well. So, you know, as you're sitting down, you tend to touch some plants and things like that. And so hopefully you get a nice whiff of those fragrances also. So, the other thing is I know a lot of times we think bigger is better with plants, but in this case, because we're working with such small pockets to plant in, we've really gone with smaller plants so that we can put more in each one of those. So you can see here, the most we've got are a couple of little uh, three inch pots, um, some little pints um, and maybe some four inch, but you don't want to use one gallons because those are going to be too big to really get into this space. So we have a good collection of plants here that will continue to grow all season long and really give us a beautiful, colorful garden. We went ahead and planted everything and watered it all really well before we went back and trimmed the liner. That way, in case there was any, you know, pull down effect or anything like that, we still made sure that we had plenty of landscape fabric to hold that soil in. And also when we planted these, we wanted to make sure that the soil wasn't um, flush with the, the block because we, when we water it, we want to make sure that the soil remains in that block. So we've got it all planted. Again, we've used some plants that might act more like the thriller. They're upright, they're tall, and then we've got some spillers that are going to flow over and soften these concrete blocks. Really the nice thing about this project is you can do it in a couple of hours. It didn't require any uh, carpentry work or anything. The boards are the same size that we bought them. And the only cutting required was to make those mesh baskets and also to put the landscape fabric in. This is an easy weekend project that will allow you to sit back and enjoy your garden. While in professional turf management scenarios, turf grasses are actually painted for the benefit of the viewer audience, most of the time when you're looking around the community and you see kind of a greenish or reddish or even pinkish tent uh, to lawns, many times what you're seeing is the spray dye that the pesticide applicator is using as a best management practice to help them understand the areas that they've already treated. Use of a dye in a spray tank helps the applicator uh, avoid spray skips or from a double applying over an area. So it's a very beneficial thing to add to the tank. You can purchase these in small pint to quart sizes at many of the garden centers and agricultural stores around the state. We ask that you not attempt to use food colorants to perform the same task as sometimes the chemistry of those reacts with the herbicides that you're using and you'll actually decrease the activity of the herbicide that you're using. So if you want to use spray dyes, uh, buy an actual spray dye intended for that product. Also concerning areas that have been treated, it's very important to stay out of areas that have been treated until the spray is dried unless the label says otherwise. Furthermore, for a few weeks after that, it's not a bad idea to avoid walking through those treated areas. There are lots of great horticultural events this time of year. Be sure and consider these activities when you're making your plans for the weeks ahead.
Next week, we get a special sneak peek of a couple of the homes that will be featured on the upcoming Tulsa Garden Club's Garden Tour. It will be a great source of inspiration for your own garden and an added enticement to attend this fabulous tour in person. We hope you join us then for more TV You'll Grow to Love. To find out more information about show topics, as well as recipes, videos, articles, fact sheets, and other resources, including a directory of local extension offices, be sure and visit our website, oklamagardening.okstate.edu. And we always have great information, answers to questions, photos, and gardening discussions on your favorite social media as well. Join in on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. You can find this entire show and other recent shows, as well as individual segments on our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. And tune in to our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel to watch segments from previous hosts. Oklahoma Gardening is produced by the Oklahoma Cooperative Extension Service as part of the Division of Agricultural Sciences and Natural Resources at Oklahoma State University. The Botanic Garden at OSU is home to our studio gardens, and we encourage you to come visit this beautiful Stillwater Jewel. We would like to thank our generous underwriter, the Oklahoma Department of Agriculture, Food, and Forestry. Additional support is also provided by Pond Pro Shop, Greenleaf Nursery and the Garden Debut Plants, the Oklahoma Horticultural Society, and the Tulsa Garden Club.